From Tally to Cali, it's time to wake up. Wake up, wake up, wake up. Warchant.com is your ultimate seminal sports source. And this is Wake Up Warchant, presented by Corner Pocket Bar and Grill. One ball, Corner Pocket. Now here's Warchant.com's Aslan Hunchavandi and Corey Clark. Yes, yes, Wake Forest Week, live show day. Thanks so much for being here, everybody. Aslan and Corey, it is Wake Up War Chant. It is live, presented by the Corner Pocket Bar and Grill in Tallahassee, Florida. CPTallyBar.com, the website, 2475 Appalachian Parkway, the physical address. The lunch special for Friday, those chicken fingers. Mm. They'll put the sauce on the side, or they'll put the sauce in the bowl, toss it around, put it in a basket for you. Delicious, delicious. Corner Pocket Bar and Grill, 2475 Appalachian Parkway. Since we are live, we're also presented by our good friends, over at Vitamin Energy, vitaminenergy.com, energy with benefits, shake it and take it. Corey, I just had a uh, mildly concerning conversation with our, our our producer back there, Josiah. Uh-oh. He's, he's, he's more than mildly concerned about this Wake Forest game. Irish okay. Irish Ophel not helping the cause with his score prediction on the War Chant Report powered by Cummins. Um, and listen, I get it, man. Like every – upsets happen. You never see them coming. Um, say something to get our guy off the cliff so we can have a good show moving forward here. Well, I, I would say this. We don't know who's starting, right, at quarterback for Wake Forest. Um, are either one of them in the same universe as Jordan Travis? No. Who has the better defense of the two teams? Florida State. Okay. Is Snuggy Hill a raucous atmosphere that's worth 7 to 10 points for the home team? I mean, those 33,000 people are going to be full throat, though. Sure, but there will be some Florida State fans there, too. Uh, right, right. Look, I'm certainly, you guys have listened to me all year. It does not mean that I think Florida State's going to go over there and roll. It sure is nice, though, when you know you have the edge at quarterback in a big way, which you did not necessarily against them last year. Um, and I don't think they had a pretty good defense last year. Uh, I think their defense is actually okay this year, too. Their, their defense horrible. is better this year than it was last year, but not enough to compensate for how much they've taken a step yeah, back offensively. Yeah, the offense has taken such a step backwards, um, and I do think you're a pretty well-coached defense that has not, up to this point, given up huge plays. Oh, there we go. So I can't knock on wood, gang. It just knocks the, it knocks the camera right off. No. So that's what should give you a little bit of confidence, I would think, is that you still have Jordan Travis. Uh, you still have Keon Coleman, uh, Jaheim Bell, Verse. You've got all – most of the best players in this game are on your team. So, mm. And you think you've got a pretty good coach. So, And I do think you benefit from the Boston College game, right? That that, that happened? I think so, yeah. That's what I think, that that happened. So you have that in the back of your mind. So these guys can't come in overconfident. They know they can go and play a team that is outmanned and be in a dogfight if they don't play well for four quarters. So I, I, would, think, I would think they're going to play pretty well. I do. All right. Uh, let's get to the rest of these questions in our mailbag from our valued subscribers over at wordchant.com. Do we also, is this totally meta? Oh, I thought we also had Island Chief on YouTube as he read his question off the uh, the Tribal Council. I think our guy Dave from Bardstown wants me to go back and read all of his jokes. We'll see if we got, we don't have enough time, Dave. We don't have enough time. We'll try though. This is like, it's getting to be uh, Jimmy Kimmel and Matt Damon. <laughs> when he said he'd have Matt Damon. Oh, sorry. I apologize to Matt Damon. We ran out of time. <laughs> um Island Chief says, wake up, sleepy nooner. That seems to describe every road game this season. Eh, Clem yeah, Clemson was a nooner. I don't know how sleepy it was. It wasn't though. sleepy, though. Uh, I'm glad we practice in the morning. Yeah, yeah, me too sometimes. Uh, we were all aware of the second-half strength of this program. We've outscored opponents 159 to 40. That almost sounds uh, not nearly as convincing as I thought it was, but that I means that's 119 points, which is a huge margin, but I, yeah. I figured it'd be even more than that. Is the price for this dominance in the second half at the virtue, or not the virtue, but at the cause here of some first half letdowns, Corey? Can we not have both? Can we not just have dominance from start to finish? You can't have both. Uh, you know, not every, not many teams have it every game. Nobody does right now except Michigan. Um, again, I, we, I will stress we all know how they're doing that. Um, but, yeah, you you are due one of these. You are a do, do a game where you're up 24 to 7 and you kind of coast to a 41 to 14 win. Not predicting that to happen. Wake's very well coached. They're, you are 
they are you are they are not going to be penalized, and you are going to be penalized. So you know that going in. But yeah, I don't think it's I I don't think they're mutually exclusive. I think you can do both. I think you can be really good in the second half, and occasionally dominate a team in the first half. It doesn't have to be like this. What was the score of the BC game at half? Weren't they up? They were up at half, right? 20, like seventeen to ten. No, I thought it was even more than that. But yeah, go ahead. I'll, I'll see if I yeah. So I I think they were up seventeen to hit ten at half against BC. But again, they got down ten to three. Correct. Um, 17 10. Yeah. And, and then they were down 10 to nothing uh, at Clemson. And then they cut that to, I think they were down at the half there. They were down at the half um, against, against LSU. Against LSU. They were, they were down at the half against uh, um, who else? There was somebody else they were down at the half by. Or Virginia Tech, they were only up by five after the first play of the third quarter. Mm-hmm. Um, so in Duke, they were down at the half. So they're, I get it. It would be nice if they came out and played uh, well in the first half. I don't think you can continually count on just dominating the second half moving forward. Go ahead and dominate the first half and see what happens. Strong reference there by Jeremy in the comments section. Uh, Nikita Whitlock. Well, you didn't read the whole thing. It's well, a podcast it, too, Aslan. Well, I put, sometimes I just put up the questions for people. To, you know, it's a, it's it's a passing comment. We're focusing on the people on the – on the tribal council oh, right gotcha. now. Okay. But Jeremy said that even if Wake Forest cloned Nikita Whitlock five times, five times over, they would not win. So, okay. All right. Well, that's a lot of confidence in this Florida yeah. state fan base. It would be nice to see them go and, and control this game pretty much from start to finish. No pressure core, but S Quinn is excited to watch you plant the war chant flag on Snuggy Hill this weekend. Uh, man up. Consider this a defensive tackle appreciation post and question. I asked this on the tribal council, but wanted your opinions. Do you think that Braden Fisk and Daryl Jackson were brought in specifically to blow up this slow mesh Wake Forest offense? Obviously, Fisk has been good against other teams, but his ability to quickly penetrate the line of scrimmage is going to wreak havoc in Winston-Salem. We haven't had the ability to do that over the last few years. Go Knowles, S. Quinn 67, Class of 93, Garnet Club, Battles and Collective member. Okay, all right, S. Quinn 67. Uh, no, I don't think that. Uh, I think he was brought in because he's a very good football player. Um uh, and that's that's why he's here. It will it should bode even it should be even more important this week against that crazy offense. It should be. We'll see, but it should be. You're rotating in three defensive tackles that are really good, in my opinion. And Malcolm Ray has his moments. So you're rotating in three guys that if you if you keep them fresh, should you you, you would hope um, would kind of dictate terms on that line of scrimmage, and they can't just sit there and hold it for six seconds. If they're holding it for six seconds at the line of scrimmage and you don't know who has the ball, Braden Fisk and Joshua Farmer should be both bear-hugging both the quarterback and the running back. They, they, they're they better than they were last year. Remember, Wake played Florida State's defense last year. It didn't have Fabian Lovett. Uh, it didn't have really Robert Cooper. Farmer wasn't this. Braden Fisk wasn't here. Um so it, it's this is a much better defensive front than that what they faced a year ago. Um. All right. I think we got two more here. I'll just leave them both on the screen because I can't uh, blow it up and just focus on one. So we'll we'll deal with it. We're pros. Winkles. Uh, if the War Chant Staff Riders had to fight the Demon Deacon Riders, do you think you guys would win? Just because there's more of us, we would flood them with uh, just superior numbers. <laughs> I don't know any. I don't know any of the Wake Forest writers, to be quite honest with you. Um, I don't know how many they have, but I can promise you, War Chant has more. And uh, so, yeah. Well, I don't know. Like, we only really have three writers. If he's talking about the whole staff, then yeah, absolutely. We got Jeff, Tom, Ira. Mm-hmm. Well, Ira's a writer too, but Jeff and Tom don't really write. Um, so I, it's it could be close. I'll let you know after I I'll, let me do some scouting, some recon in the press box on Saturday, and I'll let you know. Tom writes. Tom writes those third and langs. That's right. So he yeah. definitely counts too. Yeah, I just feel like we're gonna over we're gonna overwhelm him with sheer numbers. Yeah, uh, ground superiority, everybody. Uh, all of that John Dell fellow that was on the show this week from the Winston Salem Journal looked like a sturdy sturdy gentleman. Might be tough to take out, but I think. Well, look, I'm not saying we're not going to get our asses kicked. A couple of us, <laughs> it might happen. Sorry for the language, kids. If you're riding, going to school or early morning. Um, but by and large, there's so many more of us. I feel like you know, if I if Ira gets punched in the stomach <laughs> and goes down, I jump on that guy's back, and then you come in. So you know what I mean? Like we got that going for us. <laughs> oh my gosh, what it would be to be in a, in a like a legitimate <laughs> brawl with Corey Clark yeah. on my side would be right. amazing. 
Amazing bucket list. Um, your guy, Naked Knoll, Naked underscore Knoll, wake up. Do we still have a chance of getting ESPN College Game Day this, this season if Miami were to win the next couple? Also, what an all-name team miss by Wake Forest, not recruiting Deacon Hill, a quarterback at Iowa. Who is oh, playing yeah. quarterback at Iowa. Yeah. Um, yeah, do they have a kid named Deacon Hill that's their quarterback? I, I believe Neck and Noel. I'll take him out. I haven't watched a lot of Wake, uh, a lot of Iowa football this year. I'm going to go ahead and say Deacon Hill must suck uh, <laughs> because that offense is abysmal. It's unbelievable. We talked about it today on Coach Speak. That should be dropping any time now um, in the next hour or so. Um, they are dead last, Aslan, in yards per game in the country. They mm. average 230 yards per game. Mm. Can you believe that? I mean, that's un that's almost you have to try not to gain yards um, if you have an offense that bad. But luckily, it's just the head coach's son that's running the offense. So Iowa fans are probably pretty fired up, but they're pretty they're cool with that. But yes, it was a it was a miss. Uh, but apparently Deacon Hill wouldn't be good enough to play at Wake Forest. Ma, the meatloaf, the meatloaf. <laughs> James B wants some meatloaf. Good grief, James B. I'm at. I, I don't have the soundboard. Mm. Just gonna wank, have to wank, wank, wank. There we go. Bang! <laughs> what? Uh, James you B. You sound just like it. Good job. Good grief. Five hundred bucks in the jar. What a human being. Um, I'm back. We've seen you around, but we haven't. Yeah, maybe not. Maybe not in the live chats here, but we've seen you at the CPs, seen you at the tailgates. Mm -hmm. Just want to thank all my buddies on the War Chant staff for the thoughtful well wishes. My Noel family on the JCS chat, and all my Noel family in its entirety. My love to you all. It's good to be alive. Literally, sometimes people. Uh, Wake is going down hard. Hey now. There you go, James B. There you go. Thank you very much, man. That's that's very very kind. I feel bad for James B. Uh, but you know what, buddy. I'll make it right. So he texted me uh, maybe Monday. It was like, hey, have you checked the winners of the, the contest at Corner Pocket yet? Because I he picked 38 to 21, and the score was 38 to 20. And I'm like, buddy, I haven't looked at it yet, but you got to be really close. And then literally, I went through the cards. There were probably 50 or 60 entries. Literally, the last one I look at, uh, James was in the lead. There was somebody else that had 37 to 20. James B. had 38 to 21, but his tiebreaker for Keon Coleman receiving yards was closer. So he was all set to win. And then the that, last card I picked up was uh, the Peyton exact Engel. score. That Peyton Engel, dude. Peyton Engel, 38 to 20. Ooh. I think that's your name, Peyton. Um, look, man, that's a crazy email address to try to read. I hope I got it right. Um, and I hope you got your gift card. But James B., we're going to get you a gift card the next time you come in. You deserve it. You were close enough. Uh, but thank you very much, man. And we are all glad uh, you're healthy and happy. Absolutely, man. Um... I was going to say, did the email bounce back? You know, usually emails bounce back if it's a bad email. I don't think so. I didn't email it. They did from Corner Pocket, and I wasn't told that it didn't work. So I'm assuming uh, they got it. And if not, it's more money for James B. All right. And in, in the spirit of uh, being generous, uh, courtesy of our great friend here, James B., I'm going to try to find our guy from Bardstown. Well, don't give me any money, Dave. I don't want your money. We mm. don't want it. We just, just want to make it right. We want to make it right. Um, he caught the end of our show the other day, watching myself and Ira. He couldn't help but think the solution to our travel problems would be for everyone to stay the night at Corey's before heading back to Tallahassee. If you make bunk beds, there will be more room for activities. Okay. All right. Okay. That usually do is that. the plan. Well, that's, that's a plan on the way up to the mm. Carolinas stay, uh, in Atlanta, maybe not at Corey's. We stayed at Corey's one time on the way back from kickoff, but yeah. that's the only time, um, uh, but then that was a noon game against Clemson, so it made no sense to stop that far away from Tallahassee the next day. And then his last uh, strong contribution to the program, the only reasonable explanation for Mike Gorvell, Mike Gorvell, Mike Norvell going for that second, fourth down, and I quote, Alex, if you bring that didgeridoo to practice one more time, you're suspended for the first quarter. Look. Dan, you know I'm a I'm a fan of yours. I don't. What's a didgeridoo? It's the, the also boom, the, the long thing they put in Australia that uh, instrument. I was thinking he was talking about Alex Atkins. Oh no no, uh, Master Mono. I got it. See, they're over my head. We got to dumb them down. Too we got to dumb them down a little bit. Too smart. Too smart. Uh, speaking of traveling, Lamar Calhoun wonders, Corey. I want to know how many miles you drive back and forth from Tallahassee to Georgia. 
Well, it's about 300 miles, uh, two and four, so 600 round trip, and I do that, uh, you know, once a week. So, uh, and I, look, I've had some issues with speeding tickets over the years. I was just thinking about this, Aslan. I actually, and I'm not proud of it, I had my license suspended uh, right before COVID uh, solely for speeding point, for points on speeding tickets. <laughs> And I get it. I deserve to have it suspended. They still let me have it um, because I told them I drove to see my son. So I got a they they suspended the suspension, but I could only drive to see my son and then back here. And I get it. I'm not proud of it. Also, I haven't had a speeding. I've had one speeding ticket in the last I think we're up seven years now. I've only had one speeding ticket, but they accrued. And um, I just want to point out when you put together when you do the ratio of miles driven. In the speeding tickets I've gotten, I think it's probably, I mean, nobody drives more than me. Yeah. I had, I just, I got a new car because my last car had 180,000 miles on it in five years. So I'm just saying when you do the math and I'm on the highway a ton, um, when you do the math, it's not crazy that I get so many speeding tickets because I drive more than everyone else. And I've truckers, had- except truckers, and those things can't speed. So say that again, five years, how many miles? 180, 180,000. Wow. So like what, that 35 ish, 32 yeah, and a half. Yeah. 36,000 miles a year. I've had my car for four years. It has 36,000 miles on it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm on the, yep. other. I was thinking about this the other day. We'll get back to Florida state stuff. I had like a wistful thought. This is, I, I hope for this almost more than I hope for happiness for myself, Corey, that just one day, like in, in eight years, you're going to get a random phone call from Brady. Cause he's going to be driving with his girlfriend to go meet her parents for the first time. And they're going to live like in, you know, Knoxville. And he's going to mm. have to drive. And he's just going to call you. And it's all going to hit him at once. He's like, hey, dad, listen, I love you. And you're like, what? Is everything, what's wrong? Is everything okay? But yeah, man, I just want to call you and tell you I love you, man. Because uh, I just realized what you did for me for 13 years, driving yeah. back and forth from Atlanta, Tallahassee, man. So um, I love you. Uh, and then also, he'll can be I like, get $300? You know, he, can I get $300, he'll, you, please? He'll, yeah, and then it'll be like, you know, another option is you could have just stayed with mom. You didn't have to get a divorce and make me, uh, you know, have single parents on both sides. So, yeah, it's uh, I do what I can. We we all try to do what we can for our kids. Uh, T. Giddings, man, one of our dudes. Uh, usually I'm wearing something he sent us. Uh, hockey jersey, Boca Raton fire. I wore the uh, I wore the hockey, not the jersey. I wore the hockey shirt uh, today uh, to work out. Nice, nice. I actually wore the Boca Firefighter Union uh, hoodie thing mm, okay. at the meet and greet last week. So it's it's a real thing. Someone's ringing at my doorbell back in Tallahassee, it looks like. Or someone's ringing at my doorbell right now. It's probably one of my mom's neighbors, and they're freaked out that there's somebody yelling inside the house because they know she's not here. Um, well, it'd be weird for them to come and check on it themselves instead of calling the police. <laughs> oh, well, what are you going to do? Uh, let's do the show. Wake up, gentlemen. As on, make sure Ira knows you can't be at most airport terminals by more than three hours before your flight. Thank you. Okay. It's, it's, Hey, I'm just saying what a guy told me. It's a great point, Thomas. I was thinking about too, because it's not like you're going to Kennedy or LaGuardia or Hartsfield, like Pittsburgh airport isn't a huge airport and they probably, their workers probably don't want to be working at two in the morning and they're probably not there. So three 30, I think for a 5 a.m. flight would probably be when you'd want to get there. And he wanted to clarify for the pit trip through five more dollars at us. You're, you're crazy, Thomas. We love you, man. Uh, thank you. I'm, I'm going to clip that out. I'm going to email it to Ira right now. Yeah. Lee Fields wonders who's going to break the rock Saturday, guys. Hmm. If the defense plays well made, just give it to Renardo just for like lifetime achievement. Yeah. He's an achievement already, Adam, please. I agree with that. Ren- I was going to say Renardo or uh, one of the D tackles. But yeah, I think Renardo's a good choice. Shaheem's gotten to do it twice. I don't know that Renardo's ever gotten to do it. I don't remember him ever doing it, but he's very, very good. Dark horse pick? Like, what about Darion? Okay. Crazy random. Like, if he taps into 2022 Boston College of Darion, mm. you know, maybe does some stuff, and then we're really cooking with grease. Corey to Corey. Corey Bates, five bucks in the jar. Thank you, Corey. Thank you, Corey. Corey Clark, what was the better defense? Florida State 1993, Florida State 1999. Yeah, I like that he's asking this because apparently these records, I don't know if they're records, but what Michigan is pursuing right now, uh, these margins of victory, how much they're outscoring their opponents, I don't think it has been done since the 93 Florida State team. Yeah, I think Florida State 
in fact, I know Florida State led the country in scoring offense and scoring defense that year, which is incredible. I think they averaged like 51 points per game and gave up like eight or 10. I would say the 93 team. I, the 99 team, again, I've talked about this before. If you go back and look at that team, it was wire to wire. It was a very good team. It wasn't as dominant as like 25 years later you might remember it being. There were a lot of games that were in the fourth quarter. They gave up 35 points at home to Georgia Tech. Um, they gave up, I don't know, well, I was going to say they gave up 23 to Florida, but one of those was a pick six. But either way, they weren't they weren't as suffocating, in my opinion, as the 93 team. But the 93 team gave up 31 to Notre Dame in the biggest game of the year. So, But in the championship game, they only gave up, I think, one touchdown. What was the final, 18 to 16? So uh, against the against the team, it was funny back then, Aslan. Nebraska was – we were so used to just knocking – Florida State and Miami would just beat the bejesus out of Nebraska every time they played them in bowl games. You didn't realize that Nebraska had kind of flipped the script and turned the corner until that game because that looked like a different Nebraska team than Florida State had ever faced. They were lucky to win. Um, they didn't move the ball hardly at all. That was a great defense. And then they went on to win. They didn't lose for the next two years after that game. We didn't quite realize how good Nebraska was at the time when Florida State was playing them in 93, but I go with the 93 defense. All right. All right. Right on. Thanks for the uh, tips there, Corey Bates. Appreciate it, man. Yeah, thank you, man. And Marvin Jones could have been on that team, but he chose to go to the NFL. Mm -hmm. Speaking of choices in life, shout out to Leo Noel. 20 bucks on the jar. Dollar, dollar bills, (laughs) y'all. Nice. Uh, Just wanted to shout out Duke Cooper, Derek McClendon, Travis J and company. Yeah. Brendan Four. Gant. Brendan Gant. Don't forget Brendan Gant. Brendan Gant. Uh, Bishop Thomas. Mm-hmm. That's five. Yeah. yeah. Uh, four and three and 49 degrees must be pretty awesome right about now. <laughs> Come on, man. Drink vitamin energy. Go to Corner Pocket. Smash a like button. Absolutely. Uh, thank you, Leo. Do head to vitaminenergy.com. Energy with benefits. Seven hours of energy supports weight loss, accelerates metabolism. The first and only clinically proven energy shot to not only provide energy, but also benefits as stated, such as clearing your brain fog, uh, improving focus, and improving your mood. So go to the website, vitaminenergy.com, promo code WARCHAMPBOGO, WARCHAMP, B-O-G-O. And yeah, it's uh, it's a one-time use thing, but here's the, here's the trick, everybody. Buy like 10 of them. Mm-hmm. And then you'll get yep. 10 free. Take advantage, and, yeah. Yeah, so like, you know, stock up, stock up. Uh, sorry, I didn't realize that earlier. But uh, it's cool that people are like, oh, it's not working for me because that means they're going back. It means, that they means like they've it. done it at least once. You're right, Aslan. You're absolutely like right. It. So it's a victory. Um, I'm going to take, I think I'm going to take the the mood the mood plus before tomorrow. So I'm in a good mood early in the morning dealing with the uh, housing inspectors. That'll put me okay. in a good mood, I think. So whatever you're in. Figure it out. Vitamin Energy's got something for you. Vitamin promo code WordChamp, BOGO, shake it and take it. Energy with benefits, vitamin Thank you, Leo Noel, for that. I, I would say out of those guys, McClendon is the one you could still, that would be playing on this team for sure um, and starting. Well, but they maybe not starting, but playing a lot. Um, and I wonder what he thinks. Like Duke Cooper, I don't think was going to be playing for this team. Obviously, Bishop Thomas never had. Travis J never really had. Um, so those aren't huge losses. Well, none of them are huge losses. Clearly you're seven and oh, but I wonder if you could get a moment of honesty from McClendon and maybe Brendan Gant, but certainly McClendon like, man, was this the, should you have done that? Like, should you have done that? You could maybe be playing, um, for, for a, for a team that has a chance to win a championship and you would be playing and you played pretty well last year. And now you're playing for one of the worst defenses in the United States, a coordinator that isn't great um, in a program that's going to be lucky to get to six wins. Hmm. I don't know. I just, I, 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 it's it was a weird decision on his yeah, part. Well, I mean, I think Brendan Gant, I, I think they'd put Brendan Gant out there on the football field. I, yeah, I, I do too. I, I do too. I, I, he, 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 I don't think he's starting though, No, but no, he's no, playing no. a lot. I think McClendon would have, if he's not starting, he's at least getting, well, heck, they're going to give starter reps to anybody that plays defensive end, but it would just, it would have made this team better. And I think it would have made for a more fun season for him, but I could be wrong. You might love it in Boulder. He might start a family there. Um, Lamar Calhoun. What up Lamar? What does FSU have to do to be ranked higher than fourth? I feel like they have a, they have better wins than those ranked ahead of them. Uh, yeah, keep winning. 
And then the, one of those teams will lose. Ohio State and Michigan play each other. So that knocks one of them down. Um, and then Georgia, I don't know, man. They might lose too. Just keep winning, man. It, it, it really doesn't matter. I say that now, you know, five days before Halloween. It does matter in December, and but think you know so many dominoes have to fall for it to really matter to Florida State, and you don't want to be thinking, man, why can't they? Why aren't they ranked second in the country? And then you go lose to Miami, or you go lose this week. So if you keep winning, all that stuff takes care of itself. Z Chan, <laughs> bang, um, fifty bucks in the jar. I'll stop doing that, everybody. I'm sorry. Howdy, guys. Zip Z Chan. Went to dinner with Z Chan on Friday night. Did I tell you that? Yeah, I think you mentioned Yeah, it was it. fun. Yeah, it was a good time. Where'd you go? Can I ask? Too personal? Well, they don't sponsor us. It wasn't okay. Corner Pocket. It was no. near Corner Pocket, but no, they're no. not a sponsor of the show, so I'm not yep. going to give them any uh, free advertising. Do not. Do not. I like that. When Duke scored the pick six, it felt like in baseball when the other team hits a single, but then scores because of an unforced error. What does Jordan Travis need to do to avoid that kind of error again? Yeah, it was so bizarre because he just doesn't make mistakes like that typically. Um, so I would just say, keep being who he's being. I, you know, he doesn't make that throw. Obviously the interception he had against LSU. And then another one he almost had kind of in a similar situation, deep in his own territory against LSU um, that he was very, very lucky. That ball wasn't intercepted. Um, that's really been about the three. It's not like he's throwing a lot of balls that were almost intercepted or could have been intercepted. That was just a bizarre a bizarre decision by a guy that doesn't make many, that makes a lot of really good decisions. So, you know, stay above the chains, which would be nice. Don't be in third and 11 where you feel like you have to force it. Um, that That's a good, that's, that's would be my advice. Um, and know that punting is okay, which he is. I mean, again, he's had two turnovers all year in seven games. So I, I think he's, he's done all right on that front. Uh, that was just, it, it stood out because it was so un Jordan Travis like. It is interesting because you don't want him to be too risk averse where he's not taking chances and, and trying to make something happen. But like when you look back on his body of work, when it comes to throwing the football, there's not a lot of like crazy, wild, reckless passes that, you know, kind of go his way. Right. It's it's going through the right read, finding the open guy, making the right throw. It's not yeah. a lot of like th you know, the, the, the uh, catch the key on. That crazy one that was like Ermon Lane 2014, Louisville Escort. It went between the guy's legs and somehow he caught it. Like that is not what he usually does. But we, we've seen him in some of those moments, like against LSU, where it's not what he's thinking in terms of the coverage. Pressure is coming at him. And instead of just throwing him in the dirt or maybe scrambling, he's like, I got tall guys. Let me see if they can, they can hopefully figure out something. So it's only happened really twice that's been a problem. Um, and I, I get everyone, I think everybody, Corey's at the point now. They look at the schedule, they see what this team is, and then they start, I guess, projecting, right? Like, this is, we can't keep doing this. It's going to cost us at some point. And I don't want to be so cavalier. Like, well, it hasn't cost us yet. It's fine. Uh, I, don't know, I guess there's like a, that middle ground of being cautious, but at the same time, not like crippling with fear about this stuff. Yeah. And, you know, it's not like they didn't go on, go in on film and say, look, look at, look at the rest of the field. You have a guy open there and you have a guy open there. Now they're short of the sticks, so they're going to have to make a guy maybe two miss to get the first down. But if they don't get the first down, you're still punting to a bad offense with a good punter, and they're going to have to go 50 or 60 yards or 70 yards to go score. Jordan Travis knows that. He's played a lot of football, and he realizes what this defense is. I think a part of it was just being a little frustrated by how the game had gone, quite frankly. Uh, they had scored a touchdown, but the previous two drives, they'd gotten stopped on fourth down. And I think he was – he didn't want to have another fourth down. He didn't want to punt. Um, and he just, I think he was kind of frustrated in the moment and wanted that drive to continue because he didn't want to give the ball back to Duke because they had already done that twice. And I just think moving forward, um, he'll, he'll be smarter than that because he's a very smart quarterback that takes care of the ball. And that was just a bizarre um, kind of anomaly of a play. Hmm. Moving along here, uh, our guy in Kentucky, Dave, he's back. He great question. Alexander. That's a great question, Dave. It is. It is. Would Michigan have been caught if the guy buying the tickets, his name was Dan Smith? Instead of Connor Stallions. That's a, uh, it's a great question. Uh, I don't know the answer to that because I don't know how uh, they caught on to it in the first place. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't know how they did it. I don't know who, who, who told which universities found out first, 
when they started looking at all the ticket purchases. But yes, that's a great, great question. Dan Smith, uh, John Smith, Jack Johnson, like anything like that, I think you you're probably okay. Connor Stallions, you can't be inconspicuous with a name like Connor Stallions. You have to know it's like being a seven footer. You're going to walk into a restaurant and people are going to look at you. It's not your fault. You're not even famous. You're just a seven foot guy that's an accountant, but you're seven feet. So you're kind of like a celebrity, just like a beautiful woman. It's kind of like a celebrity, even if she's not, because everybody looks at her when she walks in. Same thing with a guy like me with this. I mean, are you kidding me with this? And a seven footer and Connor Stallions. When you have a name like Connor Stallions, you got no choice but to go with the pseudonym if you're going to do some shady stuff. Yeah. Aslan Hajavani doesn't afford you the ability to, to do some crazy stuff because, you know, that name. Right. Uh, uncommon. Christopher Mann, two N's in Mann. If you could combine Duke's defense, LSU's offense on a singular team, do they on the field win the national title? I mean, it's close. Yes. I mean, LSU, yes. I, I, but what, Imagine why, Duke why, yesterday with, with Jane right, Daniels. If I said to you right now, Florida State, on the field, do they win the national title? What would your answer be? Right now? I mean, is the LSU offense that much better than Florida State? Is the Duke defense that much better than Florida State's defense? Like, why do we need to make a – why do we need a Frankenstein a team to win a national champion? No, I, I think they're just saying – I think the point is LSU's offense is so good, Duke's defense is so good. If you combine them, would they have a chance? Yes, they would definitely have a chance. I don't know if they'd win it. Yeah, you're right. It's a good point. I don't know that LSU's offense is any better than Florida State's. Well, you um, said you're hesitant to say that Florida State could win a national championship, but on that question, you're like, yeah, sure. Well, they, I mean, yeah, sorry. I meant they could – they energy. could – they could win it. Doesn't mean I would predict them to, but they would certainly have a better chance than either one of those two teams do right now without the other side of the ball. I guess that's what I meant. It's you would have an elite offense and elite and a pretty darn elite defense, which is uh, you'd kind of have Florida State, honestly, right? Right. I would think so. I would yeah. think so. Uh, what has happened to LSU though? I mean, defensively they've taken a nosedive, but offensively they've lifted off since they played Florida State. I, and I. I haven't watched or really paid enough attention to, to determine what it what it's been because I don't I don't think their offensive line has changed. It's still Jaden Daniels a quarterback. It's still Malik Neighbors out wide. I just have more receivers stepped up for them, or yeah. is it just maybe the SEC's got some porous defenses this year. Well, it's all all the above, but yeah, they're I think they've got more receivers than they know that they that they can count on now that they didn't then in that first game, and uh, yeah, they've just they feasted on non Florida State defenses, but Adam Fuller had something for them. That's right. Take away that first 60-yard pass with nobody in the same uh, hemisphere as the kid that caught it, and LSU didn't do much of nothing. Yeah. Jeff Mayers, 10 bucks in the jar. Thanks, Jeff. Thank Appreciate you, Jeff. You, man. Jeff's a longtime guy that's been commenting on videos, um, throwing money in the jar now. Jeff, look at you, man. Look, winning, man. Winning yeah. does a lot of cool things to a lot of people. Keep it going, Mike. Good afternoon, gentlemen. What are the chances that Trey Benson busts a 90 90- or greater yard run touchdown, much like the run Dalvin had at Wake years ago. Go Knowles. I mean, I mean, uh, very Small. unlikely because that just the ninety plus start. yard runs don't happen. Well, they won't start on their own ten yard line, right? I mean, was it Wake's gonna? You know, Wake won't be able to punt. Well, they won't get good enough field position to punt that far down and. Florida State's not going to return a kick and only end up at their own 10 yard line. Maybe Wake goes for it. Well, they could. Well, look, Florida State's going to return a kick for a touchdown, but it'll be called back from a for a phantom hold. And so that when it's half the distance from where the hold happens, so the ball will be at the nine instead of a touchdown. That's happened at Wake, by the way. Derwin James returned a kick for a touchdown that was called back. Uh, they couldn't find a hold on Dalvin's long run. I was thinking about that play the other day because it's funny when you're in the when you're in the stadium watching it, that Dalvin run in particular, we're kind of at the the twenty yard line is where we're we're stationed in the press box. The the yard the the end zone he's running towards, and it still it looks like in real time watching on the field that the DB is gaining on him. And you're like, oh, is Dalvin going to get run down? Is Dalvin going to get run down? It looks like he's going to catch him at about the fifteen. And then you watch the TV highlight, and he was never close. Uh, it's just weird how that works sometimes. I remember that happening with work done somewhere. It looked like he was going to be caught. Um, but it would be awesome if Trey Benson busted a 90-yard run. But I would say the probability, since he's never had one, um, and the odds are you might not even have a ball uh, possession starting inside your 10, 
I would put it at 0.5% chances. Okay. Okay. Henry Lyles, we're live again, boys. Corey, it's been well documented how much you abhor the abhor. line change. Abhor. Abhor. Yeah. Abhor. S chew. <laughs> That's a weird word. Uh, how much you dislike? Was Henry the guy that came up with the uh, tertiary? I think he did. He drop tertiary on us the other week. He's like Mark Jones, that ESPN announcer that always wants to show off his vocabulary when he's when he's working with Lewis Riddick calling a Colorado game. Um, you you remember what he said? Mark Jones was the announcer that did the Miami game when part the fourth and fourteen. Yeah. And then he goes, and then, you know, Miami tried to run a play when they couldn't. They tried to spike the ball. And he goes, therefore, the game is over. The referee Flanagan said that. Do you remember what, uh, what, how Mark Jones phrased it? No. What an inglorious end for the Hurricanes, <laughs> which I was like, man, that's per, what a, or an inglorious finish. Yeah. It was like, man, that was a perfect way to sum that up. Um, all right, so you abhor the line yeah. changes on defense, but do you think it could be big for the guys in January to know they can show up because they have all year? Yeah, and abhor is probably uh, too strong a word. Yeah. Uh, dislike is probably a better word, and, I, and I'm probably wrong. I admit it now that I'm wrong. Um, it just – when they play a team like Wake Forest who does not have a good offensive line, maybe Turner and, and um, Edmund can make some plays. They had no chance against Duke. Those tackles were dominating um, th those two particular players, and they just were getting – the defense was much, much worse with them on the field than it was with 5-11. and 11. And I just thought, how about letting 5-11 and 11 play their snaps right now, try to get control of this game, get a couple score lead, and then start showing off your depth. But yes, man, I mean, look, you look at these numbers. Fabian Lovett's probably averaging 24 snaps a game, 26 snaps a game, maybe. I don't even know if he's averaging that. Jared Verse is probably averaging 40 instead of 70. That should all matter when you get to Miami or when you get to Florida or if you're in January. And in January, if you're playing in January in a game that matters, don't forget you'll have Daryl Jackson back too. So you, you'll have a really fresh guy to throw in the mix, and it, it makes sense. It makes sense. I guess it's just me bemoaning it the last game because I was like, man, this isn't a game you can screw around with. Um, you need to win this game. You cannot lose this game, and you're not giving yourself the best chance to win this particular play in this particular drive in this particular quarter if you're not playing 5-11 and 11 right here. But I do think maybe they'll mix and match more, and you'll, you'll see them intertwined and not just – starters out backups in all the time um but yes it should make a difference in january it should and look their second half defense has been incredible all year save for one game so i'm stupid and i admit it and just in the moment no, it bothers me but i do it. i do understand why they do it and i just quite frankly uh edmund and byron turner just need to play better they play better than you did last saturday make me my words go make plays man go let five and eleven rest some Go get a three and out where five and 11 don't even have to be on the field. By the way, Fabian Lovett has played 182 snaps this year, seven games. So that's 27 uh, per game. I'm looking at Georgia's roster according to PFF. They only have one interior defensive lineman who's played more snaps than Fabian Lovett. And wow. that is Warren Brinson. He's played 189. That's the most of actually any defensive lineman for them is 189. So that's that's the blueprint. That's clearly what they're trying to do as well. Like I pointed out a couple shows ago, you don't have the depth. You don't have the depth of talent, of NFL talent that Georgia does. But it makes sense to do this, man. It really does. Um, it's just in the moment it can be frustrating when you like, okay, you just got a 10-3 to 3 lead. Get a three and out here. Take control of the game. Oh, no, they're already at midfield because you didn't get any pass rush there. And he had, he had all day to throw to his tight end for 21 yards. But – You've shut out almost every D offense you've faced in the second half this year, so keep doing what you're doing. By the way, shout out to Jeff Mayers. He's a he's a subscriber. Colorado Noel on the boards. Didn't realize that, nice. Jeff. Love you, man. R. Wilmer. I thought that was Derek McClendon. I thought <laughs> I thought D Mac was Colorado Noel. Uh, R. Wilmer. As on a Corey, which receiver other than Johnny or Keon has the best game the next two weeks? I said Darion Williamson might break the rock, so I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with my guy. I'm stick with my, my boy from Tennessee. You've got three choices, I think, right? 88, who has not caught a pass this year, although he's been back for two or three weeks now. 
Uh, Darian, it's a good choice. I think Darian might maybe be the most skilled of all of them. Just the best combination of size. He's got some agility that Kentron doesn't have, I don't think. Um, and then there's Deuce, who up until Saturday night, never even occurred to me that he would do something. And then it's not, I'm telling you, it's not just that kick return. It's the way he looked in practice to me on Tuesday and Wednesday. He made a catch, a high point catch in one-on-ones in the corner of the end zone. Might've been against Ronaldo, where it's like, man, was that Keon? Like it's all of a sudden, it's like, does my man, is he filled with confidence now? Is Are we going to see do Span actually get close to his ceiling? Because if you do, good luck. Um, so if he, so that said, I'm still, I still, I still think I'll probably go with, uh, I, I'll go with Kentron. I'll go with Kentron. That's wild, man. He's only played 11 snaps this season at wide out do span. That's crazy. And one of them was to throw a pass. And completed it too. Yeah. 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 No lie. Um, yeah, no, I think, I think do I, I I just it, that's what I'm saying. That's why I can't pick Deuce because he just hasn't been out there enough. They don't use him enough. But if Johnny can't go this week, and we have no idea, but if Johnny can't go this week, then um, somebody's going to have to step up. And I do think they liked enough of what they saw from Deuce in practice that he might get us give himself a chance to go make some plays. Our guy James B over under 100. Maybe that's all right. Should I use this number? Well, I'm, it's a I, good I, number. You you think so? All right, this will yes. be one of the this will be one of the over unders that'll be in the Garnet and Gold twenty five dollar gift card giveaway uh, for our subscribers. Shout out to you, James. I, I'm going to start sourcing at least one question on the live show every Thursday to use in the um, giveaway. So I've been meaning to do that. Thank you, James. Over under Corey one hundred and one and a half penalty yardage against Florida State this weekend. I'm going to say under, but only because a couple of their personal fouls will be half the distance penalties. <laughs> So it's only going to be like a six yard penalty or a, a four yard penalty. Um, so I'm going to say under, but I do think they will get 10 penalties. Again, I'll, I'll say it again, everyone. Wake's played two ACC games at home. They've been called for six penalties. Their opponents, their two opponents have been called for 27, 27 to six. I wouldn't, I would be very surprised if that ratio evened out against Florida State. But I could be wrong. Do they put them up in like the best hotel rooms in Winston Salem? Like, do they give them the best food? Like, what do you think it is that refs show up and they're like, let's let's show our hospitality, our gratitude back to the good people of of Deke Town, as they call it. The only thing I was thinking of is they let them dress up like the mascot and ride around on the motorcycle. (laughs) Like every official gets to do that uh, for like ten minutes on Friday afternoon. You know, know what I mean? If they were in the SEC, that would be the coolest. Like, everyone would talk about how awesome the mascot for Wake Forest was. But since they're, like, in the ACC, they get no love. Their mascot is a wild-looking creature crazy. on a motorcycle. It's man. something out of a horror movie. I mean, that, imagine that dude being at your door at, like, 11 o'clock on a Thursday night. <laughs> Just that thing's showing up. You're like, what is going on? Yeah, it's really freaky. And in the basketball arena, because I've been there a couple of times, they do the same thing where he's on the motorcycle and he leads the team out and you smell it. Like you smell the motorcycle, like he's flooring it. It's a, uh, it's different, but yeah, it's unique. Good, good for Wake Forest, man. Good for Wake Forest. They're finding their niche. niche. Um, Mike, how good is Wake Forest special teams? I don't know. I'm, I'm not a femoral guy. Um, look that up. Can you look that up? I don't even know how to look it up. Is there, what's his website? What, what, what his website is, but I, I guess I, I can look it up here. Uh, does Keon though, uh, entertain this question, Corey, does Keon return? I mean, return a punt the distance. Return I was going to say, I think he will return a punt. If you're asking if he returns it for a touchdown, I would guess not. Um, and it will be interesting after you put deuce on film and showed that what, it, are they just going to kick it deep and trust? I don't know how many times that I don't know if they have a kicker with a great leg that they trust to kick a touchback because you have to assume they don't have many guys that can run on that kick coverage team with Deuce Span um, or Hakeem Williams for that matter. So uh, that that'll be interesting, but I I I don't think he's going to return a punt for a touchdown uh, because again that happens once a season and he had his chance and he got tackled at the six. Um, but. Uh, you know, I do think one thing – I think if Florida State hadn't allowed the kickoff return to Virginia Tech, I think by all those crazy advanced metrics, they would probably have the number one special teams unit in the country. I think even now they're like 10th or 11th or 8th 
and that's with allowing a kickoff return for a touchdown. They have been incredible at, at, on special teams this year, so you hope it it stays up. I'll look it up, Aslan. I'll this, look it up. This makes no sense. College I'll football team opponent gross punt yardage per game. Wake is in the 80s. Florida State's like 130-something. So and that can't be right because Florida State's coverage unit's like bulletproof. But yeah, Wake Forest apparently 86th in – Gross punt yardage allowed, whatever that means. Okay, all right. Well, then maybe there's a chance, and they should be putting a good bit. I know, but that also says that Florida State has a worse coverage than them. That can't be. I mean, who's returned a punt for? Uh, I mean, so I guess they've given. Let's see here. Wake Forest, uh, Florida State has allowed 223 yards. Apparently, gross punt yardage. Uh, Wake Forest, meanwhile, only 200.8. I don't believe that. Florida State never even punts. That's punt yardage. That, that's not punt return yardage. So it might be something different. Either way. Either way. Okay, I'm looking up special mm. teams right now. All right, go yeah. Go ahead, Corey. You let us know. Uh, my, meanwhile, Dave and Bard sound wonders uh, via his child, T-Bone. Uh, would Keon Coleman be good at safety? Yes. Uh, yes, he would be. Um, I don't know if he's like physical enough that you'd want. But at 6'4", rangy, great ball skills, um, I think he would be uh, – I think Keon Coleman would be very good at almost any position he played outside of, you know, the line of scrimmage. Uh, ignominious is better than inglorious. So I guess he's he's laying out – Oh, challenge. that's what it was. Yes. Yeah, that's right. It wasn't even inglorious. He went above and beyond that. That's that's right. That's the Mark Jones. Ignomanious. Ignomanious, man. What a – and it just, it's not like he was thinking that's how the game would end. It just came to him in the moment. It's crazy. Um. Hey, our guy Ingvar is back from Russia. Uh, shout out, man. Uh, Privet, whatever that means. James B says, I'm sorry, but Fabian needs to step his game up. He is getting beat one on one this year. He used to get double teamed all the time. We talked okay. about on the on the report about you know I was asking Jeff and Ira like what would it be would it be better if you saw you know statistically Trey Benson have a gaudy game or if Jared Verse had a more gaudy uh, kind of game and both of them were like listen like you know Jared is if you watch the film his efforts through the roof he's getting yeah. not like only double team like he's not only getting a tackle in his way but he's also getting chipped and once he makes it past them there's a running back also hanging back just in case so while he might not be putting up those stats that we were expecting he is affecting the game and letting other guys eat but no one else is really taking full advantage of it so it'd be nice to see maybe somebody else take full advantage of the uh, you know attention that jared's getting it wouldn't hurt to have fabian maybe but i don't know like what it's hard to see it, I guess. You know, we saw Fisk, you pointed out, there was one snap where Fisk just punched the offensive. I mean, like, not like in the face, but like with his hands against his pads and like yeah. buckled his knees and, and dropped and almost them. threw him into the quarterback. Like his hel helmet almost yeah. hit the quarterback's knees. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe one of those would be nice from uh, Fabian. But hey, again, man, they're, you know, I know well, the I, running defense wasn't great last week, but I, I think they'll bounce back. I will say this also when it comes to Fabian, um, not trying to make excuses for anyone, uh, but let's just say he wasn't uh, completely healthy last year, right? He didn't practice in the spring, right? So do right. with that what you will. He didn't, And the preseason uh, this year. Yeah, so understand what's going on there. There's probably a limited number of reps that they, they want him to play. It's why, it's why losing Daryl Jackson uh, was such a big deal. Uh, Fabian has played every game, has played hard every game. And he made two. He had two tackles for loss in that game on Saturday. I thought that was one of his better games. But yeah, he gets pushed. He he doesn't get pushed around, but he's not making uh, a, a huge impact every game. But there have been times, Duke notwithstanding, where teams have tried to run in the middle of the line, and zero is a big reason why it looks like a big wall and there's nowhere to go. So, um, let's see here, Chris Sanders. Jordan Travis over or under three touchdowns? I mean, I would say over. It's a good number, but he, I mean, he probably averages, he probably averages right at three touchdowns. So that's a, a per game. So that's a good, right? He's got like 17 mm, passing and five, five rushing, rushing in seven 22, games. So 22 yeah. and seven. So yeah, I'm going to say over because I, I want them, again, you guys know, I want them to get to 50. I want them to get to half a hundred. 
and that's going to require my man to to probably account for five touchdowns. That's what I would love, love, love to see. Have a Sam Hartman game. Come on, man. Like make up, take take make up for lost time. Now let's go. Mybookie.ag promo code is War Chant when you sign up for the first time, where you can bet anything, anytime, anywhere. Uh, use that promo code. Uh, you'll get an instant cash deposit bonus based on a percentage of what you deposit into your account. I think Corey's picked this one for later tonight. Was it three points when we discussed this the other day, Corey? The uh, tech. I Syracuse think I had game? it at two and a half, but yeah, it's three now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, plenty going on over here. Let's see. Ooh, A and M hosting South Carolina. A and M minus fifteen and a half. I feel like I'll yeah. take South Carolina on that. Maybe that's how bad South Carolina is. My goodness, what else here is of maybe interest to us? Still twenty and a half. Florida State in Wake Forest. Um, Kansas getting nine and a half at home against Oklahoma. If Kansas is quarterback, and I don't know what his status is, it seems like every week he's week to week. But if that Jaden Daniels or Jalen Daniels can play, I would surely take the nine and a half against Oklahoma. Although maybe Oklahoma's a little bit upset they almost got upset. Uh, mm -hmm. What about well, the last one here? What do you think about North Carolina State hosting Clemson and getting nine and a half? Yeah, that's a real interesting one. Um, I'm going to say I like – so Clemson, so North Carolina State is hosting the game, right? Or is it at Clemson? I would – wasn't it at – I thought it was like in Raleigh last year, but I think the way it's formatted here, it's Clemson at North Carolina State here on the top line. And, and usually it's home team is bottom. That's on what here. I was wondering. Um – What's it have for the Florida State game? Where's uh, you know, yeah, Clemson? Uh, it's at North Carolina State. It's in okay. Raleigh. Uh, so yes, I would take NC State plus nine and a half. I think Clemson will win. Well, man, NC State's offense is even worse than like Duke's, um, or Clemson's for that matter. NC State's offense was awful. Yeah, they come off a three point game. Mm. They don't know who their quarterback is. How are they going to score against Clemson? So never mind. I'm completely changing it. Clemson's oh. going to win that game. Like I'm going to say, seventeen to seven. 20 to seven, something like that. See, speaking of three points, I was trying to see what Arkansas was up to this week after they fired their offensive coordinator, but uh, I guess they're off this week. Mm. Uh, don't take a week off. Go to mybookie.ag, promo code WordChamp. Bet anything, anytime, anywhere. Looks right, like, wait, by the way, I looked it up. At Florida State, uh, according to this metric that I was looking at, it's like 17th in the country in special teams. Wake Forest is 26th. So, mm. you know, pretty evenly matched, I guess. Okay. Um, how was Wake's defense, Bradley Robertson says? Jeff looked at their like advanced analytics or whatever, and they were thinking like they're the top, they're like top 50. Yeah. So they're respectable. Again, their, their defense is like 20 or 30 spots in conventional stats in terms of points allowed, I think, and yards allowed better than they were last year. But their offense, their passing offense is so, uh, so famished uh, versus what it was last year that it doesn't really help compensate for what they're losing on that side of the ball. That if that Mitch Griffiths kid was who they thought he was going to be, like he was been he's been groomed for the last three years. Yeah. This would be a really scary game, but he just seemed he hasn't seemed to find his way at all. But so know. an overall defensive efficiency, just according to Femrau on his uh it's bcftoys.com, mm -hmm. Florida State is ninth in uh defensive efficiency in the country. So the ninth best defense according to his metrics. And Wake Forest is 49th. So if you want to if you want to kind of you know, visualize the, the the difference between those two defenses. Florida State is night. Syracuse is 45th by this metric. I was just looking at other teams that Florida State's played. So um, there you go. Wake is Wake is worse than Syracuse, according to him. But not terrible. They really aren't terrible. Um, and it's not going to be just a cakewalk where I think you run all over them. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, Pensacola pack buster. Do you believe Florida state stops wake Forest's mesh run game? No matter the defensive line, it seems like we always have issues. Well, I think everybody always has issues. What, what helps this year though, is that, like I said earlier in the week, they are, they're giving up more tackles for loss than anybody in the country. It's like nine a game. So even if you just hit the average of nine a game, well, that's nine drives that you know, they're going to have to get more than 10 yards to get a first down. Uh, it could be second and 14, and then they don't the, – the mesh doesn't hurt you as much. Um, and th they're getting blown up more than they did last year. Like last year, I don't know how many tackles for loss Florida State had in that game, but it wasn't a ton, and it didn't – it certainly didn't seem like they pushed the offensive line back. That was a decent offensive line they went up against last year. And 
their defensive line was not as good as it is right now. So I, I'm interested in that. I, I, They should stop it better than they have, but there's a reason they run it, and there's a reason Clawson always gets them to a bowl. There's a reason why you've lost to this team every year since 18. It's not all that easy to stop. The players come and go. The lines come and go. The 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 running game still produces yardage. Even last week, um, you know they didn't. Their offense obviously didn't play very well, but they ran for 200 yards. It's just kind of what they do. Ingvar, what do you think? Will it be difficult to find a really highly talented quarterback for next season? Should we look for one on the transfer portal or work with the quarterbacks with those quarterbacks available? I hear you, Ingvar. That's people are thinking about that as we as we approach November. Um, you know, I my my first inclination is to say, Ingvar, just focus on the quarterback you got right now, mm. and don't worry about that. That's gonna it's gonna give you gray hairs if you have any, um, any hair, I mean. But I, it's a good question, man. I, I think if you go, do you go and get? Because I don't think they would go and get a quarterback that had two or three years remaining. Because who does that scare away? And you've got some quarterbacks in the pipe, in the pipeline that you really like, um, including a a, you know an almost a five star, a five star coming in this year. He is one. Um, And then the year after that, I think you've already got a commitment from a kid that you really like. So if you go and get a kid that just had a breakout freshman season, maybe they look elsewhere. So it's got to be worth that. That's the calculus. We talked about this two years ago, right, Aslan, when we weren't sure what Jordan Travis was. It's like going into 2022, not many people were fired up that Jordan Travis was still the starting quarterback. But as I pointed out then, you he was a returning starting quarterback, so there weren't you weren't going to go get Caleb Williams, and there weren't other quarterbacks that were in the, on the market that were absolutely better than the guy you had. So why go do that? So if you go get a quarterback, you need to make sure that he gives you the best chance to win in 2024. But if he's a fresh, and if he if he's awesome, then who cares what these other high school kids think? Sorry, go somewhere else. We got this guy locked and loaded for the next two years. But you know, if he's just pretty good, he's just okay. Like if he's just a Brendan Armstrong, do you alienate the quarterbacks that you think might have a chance to be awesome? For a Brendan Ar- for one year of Brendan Armstrong, or do you ride with the guys you got, including Tate? That's I mean, that's why they get paid this money to figure stuff like that out. It's a weird time we live in. All right, let's go hurry up. Last three minutes of the program here, last three minutes of our week doing this, but plenty going on over at Warchant.com. Check out the Warchant report powered by Cummins, uh, matchup analysis, plenty over there. Dominic Robinson, film breakdown with Tom yeah, Lang. Always everybody. watch those. Those are really uh, insightful. Go watch those. Uh, Wake Forest has allowed the most TFLs, or not the most, but they've allowed an insane amount. Uh, Second to last in the country. Uh, Fatal Jedi over under 12 and a half TFLs for Florida State. That's just a little too much for me. I'm going to say under on that. It'll be in the neighborhood, I think. If it's not, something's gone wrong. But I don't foresee 13 tackles for loss. That would be a lot. Brett Taylor, if Florida were to lose to Arkansas, do they get bowl eligible? Ooh, that's a tough finish to the season, huh? Look at that, man. Yeah. 115, 16, and four. Yikes. And they're at Missouri and they're man, I just I don't know why. I'm probably wrong. I think they're gonna give Georgia a game. I don't think that's an absolute I just don't think Georgia's gonna destroy that team. Georgia didn't destroy Auburn. I, I don't think that that's gonna be a fifty to six route. And then I just have a sneaking feeling that Florida's gonna play well at Missouri, but Looking at that schedule, man, how often do we see Florida are, are all these SET, SEC teams? They play Prairie View A&M the week before yeah. their rivalry game. Yeah. Florida's got Arkansas, LSU, Missouri. They got Georgia, Arkansas, LSU, and Missouri back to back to back to back before playing Florida State. Florida State has North Alabama before playing Florida. So go win that game, Mike. Yeah, that's what I'm mildly nervous about somebody was pointing out why does you know what is the Pac-12 done why do they have a higher percentage of making the playoff than Florida State but like you look even and I know Southern Cal is uh, struggling right now but that's that's how Washington finishes the season right like you know at Stanford whatever but at Southern yeah. Cal versus Utah at Oregon State and then their interstate rivalry game the Apple Cup against Washington State that that you know that North Alabama game will That'll be interesting to see how that's talked about. Just keep winning your football games. You'll be all right. Yeah, but, yeah, you know, yeah. 
when you go into that week and, and they're playing Oregon State and other teams are playing some pretty high profile games and you're not, but that's crazy, man. Florida's got a real game like in Columbia and then they got to host Florida State. So um, I don't um, think I realized that. I assume they I were playing. Uh, I did too. Yeah, you know, Prairie FCS. View A&M or yeah. somebody like that. Not uh, Georgia Southern. Not a uh, not not at Missouri, man. And Missouri's good, but I just have a feeling Florida will play well in that game, and they'll beat Arkansas. So that you're they're, yeah, they're going to get bowl eligible because they'll beat Arkansas. Arkansas is terrible. Uh, and at the buzzer, Mike, if Jimbo Fisher only wins seven games, I mean, if he only wins eight games, he's done. Right? I think so. Yeah. And there, what are the odds he's going to go undefeated like the rest of the way? He's still got LSU. He's still got somebody else really good. Um, I think they're at LSU and at Ole Miss. Maybe they still have to play Ole Miss. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so you got to assume they're going to win. They're going to lose one of those two games. Look, Bruce Feldman, I thought, brought up a good point on Rosillo's podcast talking about that very topic. And like people keep bringing up the buyout because it's 75 million or whatever they would owe him. But if you keep them around till next year. You're still going to owe him sixty-five million. It's not like it goes from seventy-five million to five million. Yeah. The next year is still an enormous amount, an exorbitant amount of money too. Uh, to to go into my Mark Jones thesaurus, it's an exorbitant amount of money, um, and that would be an ignominious, <laughs> ignominious end to Jimbo Fisher's uh, tenure at Texas A&M. But yeah, if you're willing to fire him and you just don't want to do it because it's going to cost you seventy-five million, well. But you're going to be okay firing him the next year when he when it's 65 million. It's going to be a huge chunk, and it's going to be a, a, a punch to the gut either way to pay somebody that much money to not coach. But if you don't think he can turn it around, and you're tired of living in seven win land um, or eight win land, and that offense being like that, then yeah, I think you go ahead and pull the trigger. So yes, I would say if he only wins seven, if they go seven and five, he will not be back in 2024. Would be my guess. Also kind of cool that they let their teams know their kickoff time more than six days in advance. That's just so they got at Ole Miss, Mississippi State at home. They see they're playing Abilene Christian. <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? That's who I thought. That's, that's what, what, you're, I, that's what you're I thought we were looking for with Florida. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. And that's hellacious, man. Bama, Tennessee, uh, week off, South Carolina at Ole Miss, Mississippi State, and then Two weeks later at LSU, that's not fun. But hey, man, you got to play Miami. That, that's a thing, man. I, I think people realize what rivalry games mean. And even if Miami did the most stupid thing in football history a few weeks ago, that's going to be a tough game, and that should be looked upon as as a quality win, no matter how it looks. And going into the swamp too, man. Um, yeah, if it's, they're able, it's to pull never out. easy. Yeah, you should win both those games, but they are not automatic Ws. They, they you just don't have those in these rivalries unless it's like. Oh nine, and it's that Florida team versus that Florida State team are 13 when the shoes were on the other feet. Normally, if they're kind of evenly matched, even if the records aren't, um, they're going to be good games, man. They're going to think of 2006 when that Florida State team was not very good. Uh, they barely got to a bowl. Florida won the national championship. And if Michael Ray Garvin's doesn't step out of bounds, it's a tie game with three minutes to go. So that's think about that's just it's hard to win those games. So, uh, yeah, hopefully they hopefully they will. But you know what? Just take care of the Demon Deacons. Am I right, Aslan? A-Train? Mm, Just take amen. care of the Demon Deacons. Amen, brother. That's a wrap for us. Thanks so much, everybody, for being here live, listening to us in the car pickup line or jogging or at the desk. Man, we appreciate the heck out of all y'all. Thanks for asking your questions and hitting the thumbs up. Thanks to Dave and Bardstown, Jeff, a.k.a. Colorado Knoll, Z-Chan, L-E-O no, Leo no. I think he's law enforcement. Uh, shout out to the FHP that did not pull me over. That had me dead to rights outside of Perry earlier today. Thank you. Oh, there you uh, go. Maybe your good, your good karma on your traffic tickets is coming my way too, Corey. There we go. Nice. Uh, thanks to Corey Bates, T. Giddings, uh, and then James B. You don't have the pillar with you. You I can't don't, point I to him on the pillar. I, I didn't. I didn't bring the pillar. I'm sorry, everybody. Uh, but again, again, thanks for watching, everybody. Don't forget, uh, like we said, Dominic Robinson, Tom Lane doing a film breakdown on our YouTube channel. We've got the War Chan Report powered by Cummins, uh, breaking down the Wake Forest game. We've got plenty of content over on the message yeah, board. I'll have, and up. I'll have a column up in the morning. People could read uh, as you're listening to this on your drive-in. If you didn't watch the live show, What's all the that great content. What's the theme? So get there. What's the theme? Um, just kind of what you want to see this week. Like, don't, don't screw around. Go, go prove that you're one of the best teams in the country and don't give them any hope. That's kind of the theme. All right.
Thanks to all of y'all. He's Corey Maslon. And for Josiah back there, we appreciate y'all watching this edition of Wake Up War Chant Live presented by the Corner Pocket Bar and Grill and our good friends over at vitaminergy.com. 12 o'clock noon, live uh, pregame show, 1130. Sorry for being able to do so long, Corey.